right, so I wanted to give a recap for the month of April. I haven't made, I haven't done a video in a while. I was very busy with income taxes. Um, so usually I go every week, I trade recap every week. But in April, I started, I stopped a little bit, especially that I had a few weeks in April where it was just zero. I had one week zero and then the other week was like maybe $200 of close profits. So I'm going to do a recap for the remaining weeks of April. So the total for the week for the for April was 1579 US closed uh, profits. As you can see if you if you compare March, February and January, it was much higher in January. Even December was 2500, November was 1650. So 1579 April I would consider it a disappointing month just because if I compare to the previous months. So as you can see, it's not consistent. It varies sadly. Um, now, if I go through my trade recap, let me just zoom in here as much as possible. Okay, so I think I already did a video for this week. So this week here was 8.44. I believe I already did this video. So 196 here, I did not make a video. And, and the week after 2.59 as well, did not make a video on that. So I'm gonna go through these trades here because these trades are already covered in a previous video all right so april 12 vii viac a 40 put i sold a naked put at a 40 strike on april 12 for expiry may 21st i collected two dollars no sorry i collected three dollars i ended up closing it for two dollars so that gave me a net profit of 88.6 now let's look at the chart of VIAC just to see what that looks like on a chart. So we're gonna do, let's say one month. Let's zoom in this one as well. We can make it a bit bigger. I, yeah, I guess this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. All right, perfect, one month. And I said April, I said April, I opened it April 12, closed April 22nd, so about 10 days, all right. So April 12 is around here, okay? So I opened the trade when VIC dropped below 40 actually. So it was actually an in the money put, but I collected $3. So by collecting $3, my break even is 40 minus $3. So my break even is 37. So as long as it stays above 37, I don't lose any money by May 21st. Now time went by, stock went back up again. But then it actually dropped even more. As you can see here, it dropped to 37. So at this point, my put was not doing well. It was worth more than $3. But on April 22nd, came back up to 41. So at that point, I was able to close it for $2. And that's how I was able to make that $1 profit. My after commissions gives me $88.60 US. Now I keep saying US as if that's a good thing. But sadly, the US, I think, is, is at a dollar. Actually, let's, let's look it up right now. The US isn't doing too well. USD CAD, $1.21. It used to be one thirty two not too long ago. Now it's at $1.21. So that US dollar is losing a lot of value. It's giving me less Canadian. So it's not as exciting anymore when I say US profits. All right. So, so yeah, so that's VIAC. Next, we've got Snapchat. Naked put, 52.5 strike. So this was an earnings play. So this was a good one. I even sent it in my I even sent it in my trade alert group and a lot of people took advantage of it. So that's April 22nd open. I closed it April 23rd. So you can see it was a one day trade and I closed it for six cents. So I opened it for $1.25, closed it for six cents the next day. So that was an easy $100 profit. And now let's look at Snapchat at earnings. It was an interesting one. Uh, so this was April 22nd, so I could probably do maybe five days. No, I can't do five days. Yeah, I'll have to do one month. Okay, so April 22nd is around here. So Snapchat was trading at 58 before the close. I sold the 52.5 strike for a dollar for a dollar 25. So this basically obviously after earnings, I have no idea what the reaction is going to be. I don't know if it's going to go up. I don't know if it's going to go down. I just, I just know that volatility is going to get crushed. So the premiums are going to drop. And I know from experience, selling the put side ends up winning more often. So I decided to sell the, uh, I always sell the puts. I rarely sell the calls for earnings. Even though sometimes the puts could lose, I know from experience, they win more, more, more times than, than they lose. And it's easier to manage even if they get breached. I could just roll the put and wait for, for the stock to recover. 
So I sold the 52.5 put. Uh, the stock I got lucky the stock went up after after earnings so if we look at the chart here so I said April 22nd right here and as you can see the next day April 23rd the stocks at $60 so I went up and it, it was the same it, it was expiring the same day so the could have I could have let it expire worthless but I don't like to take any chances I closed it for six cents I actually had an order for 10 cents but it got filled for six cents so I got a better price and that gives me gave me one hundred seven dollar net profit after commissions. All right, so that for that week for the week ending April twenty third, that was a total of one ninety six U S. Then the week after, I closed four trades. Uh, open there was actually two puts on open a covered call on CCIV and good thing I did because the stock dropped even more afterwards, and a naked put on pins or Pinterest. Uh, open for three dollars. I ended up closing for two dollars. All right, so let's look at the open uh, put here So these were open separately one was open March 24th at a 20 strike the other one was opened April 12th uh, At a 17.5 strike. That's because open dropped Continued to drop so if I look at the chart for open O P E N So the first one was in April so I'm doing in March. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go six months and it was March 24th. All right, so March 20, March 24th was around here. So the stock had dropped a little bit from 27 to 22. I thought it was a good entry. I sold the 20 put, not good enough. Stock kept dropping, kept dropping. And then April 12, uh, right around here, I sold another put at 17.5. I thought it was good. No, it wasn't because it kept, the stock kept dropping afterwards, as you could see. But then as it came back up to $21, I closed the but I closed both puts together in one trade. So I saved $5 in commissions by closing them together in one trade. So I together, I sold them. I collected $3.40. I closed them together for $2.50. So that gave me a net profit of $67. So it wasn't a good trade, but at least I came out of it with a profit because I didn't like the scenario I was in. And then CCIV was a covered call. So it was an in-the-money covered call in my RRSP account. Uh, so I basically sold the eight, the 20 strike, ended up paying $18 to get into the trade. And then I got out of the trade, everything combined. So the shares and the call, I closed them for $19.15. So when I got into the trade, I bought 100 shares of the stock and I sold a call option at a 20 strike. The combination of that gave me a net debit of $18. So I only had to pay $18 because of that call premium that I collected. And then when I closed the entire trade, I end up buying back the call option and selling the share. So the combination of that was $19.15. So the difference here, 19.15 minus 18 is my profit of $103 after commissions. So that was April 12 to, to April 26. So let's look at the chart, CCIV, CCIV. And we could do one month. So I already forgot, CCIV is April 12 to April 26. All right, so April 12 is around here. So I entered around here, not a great entry as you could see. Looking at the chart, it's not a great entry. I like to enter on red days. So it was a red day, but not a big enough red day because as you could see, more red days came afterwards. But I ended up closing it uh, the April 26. So this, as you can see here, this could have been a much better entry. I was stuck in the trade. I still had the stock, so I couldn't close it. But as you can see, when this happened here, you see this this jump here, April 26th, I was able to close the trade. So I was able to close it for 19.15, giving me $103 profit. So that's how so that's how this trade happened. And then finally, this trade here, Pinterest, April 19 to April 26. So let's look it look it up on the chart. P I N S Pinterest. All right, one month should be enough. Uh, yeah, okay. This doesn't look like one month, but uh, I already forgot the dates here. April 19, April 26. So April 19 was around here. So Pinterest dropped a little bit. It went from 84. When I saw it trading at around uh, 72, I sold a 65 put. I sold a 65 put for May 21st expiry. So I just need pins to be above 65 by May 21st. I mean, we're not even May 21st, and I, I believe Pinterest is below 60, so that's not good. But I good thing I closed the trade early. 
Um, so it was a three, I collected $3, ended up closing it for $2 on April 26th. And if we go back to the chart, what happened on April 26th, the stock started to climb back up again and time has gone, time went by. So that allows me to, that allowed the premiums to decay. And I was able to close the, the, the put option for $2. And actually that same day or the day after I could have closed it for maybe a dollar or dollar 20. So it could have made more profit. But actually, it's a good thing I closed it because it actually dropped even more afterwards. Uh, and I actually, sadly, I got into another trade on Pinterest for earnings, which I'm currently rolling, which is not doing well. So this Pinterest trade was closed for an $88 profit. So that week gave me $259 US. And that was the week ending April 26th. Now, I think there was a final week in April. Yeah, April 30th. Looks like I don't have any closed trades for April. So yeah, for the week ending April 30th, I had no profits, nothing closed. I did have a bunch of trades, but I ended up rolling because they were breached. Um, one of them is Spotify right over here. This one's really bothering me, I, but I'm going to mention this in another video. And I just want to show you pins as well. Where did it go? So yeah, I've got a naked put now on pins at 68. Remember, I used to have the 65, but I closed it. I opened a new trade for earnings at a 70 strike. It got completely breached. So I ended up rolling the put, the 68 put on Pinterest, the 70 put on Pinterest. I ended up rolling it to 68, collected 30 cents by rolling it. So my total uh, credit on, on that trade is $1.47 for May 21st expiry. And I think Pinterest is below 60 right now. Actually, uh, let's, yeah, 59.86. So that's not doing well. So if I look back at my PL for the month, why is it so much lower? So there are a few reasons. Um, I've been very hesitant. Uh, I, I'm, I'm always afraid to lose what I built. So I'm always afraid to get into trades that I'm not sure I'll be able to manage if breached. So that makes me very hesitant to place new trades. And a lot of the trades that I was hesitant to make ended up being winners. So if I had placed all, the tra all these trades mechanically without even thinking about it, just going with what I normally do, which is just selling puts, uh, this would have been much, much higher, almost easily $3,000 for the month of April. But I did, uh, I was hesitant a lot. Even last week, in the, so the first week of May, I probably missed out on $300, $300 of profits just for, just for not making trades that I normally would have made. And instead, I ended up making the trades that ended up losers, and I had to be, I had to, I had to manage and roll. So Spotify, Spotify, I'm not disappointed because I would have easily made this trade over and over again because I was 30 points away. The stock was a 290, and I sold a 260 put, and for some reason it got breached. Impossible! Like you wouldn't, I wouldn't think that it would drop 30 points after earnings. And, and I ended up, now I ended up rolling it all the way to July 16. I'm at a 250 strike. I was at a 260 strike, but because the stock was at 230 at some point, I was 30, almost 30 points in the money, which was causing my maintenance excess to go up or to go down because it was using a lot of capital because it's a naked put. So using a, it was using a lot of capital, which was bringing my maintenance excess down. So I didn't want that to happen and get close to a margin call. So I had to bring the strike lower to save my capital. And I had to go all the way to July to do that. But I, total credits received this $4.20. And so that puts my break even at around two forty five. dollars Hopefully Spotify comes back up and does not go below 200. If it goes below 200, I'm in big trouble. I could, I could sell a call, but I, from experience, as soon as I sell that call, I know the stock's gonna come back up and then my call is gonna get breached. So my put's going to be safe, but then my call is going to be in trouble. So that's my concern. I, I should be selling a call right now because my put is completely breached. So I need the call side to, to generate some more premiums to act as a hedge as well. So if I lose on the put, well, at least I win on the call side. But I, I'm pretty certain that as soon as I sell the call, the stock's going to come back up. The put's going to be safe and the call is going to be the one that caused me the trouble. Because time and time again, whenever I sell a call spread against a put spread that I have, I end up losing against the call spread. So that's just, this This opinion is just coming from experience, from trying it out. Whenever I sell a put spread and it gets breached, the hedging, the correct hedging mechanism is to sell a call spread against your put spread. So at least you collect extra credit and you can't lose on both sides. You're either going to lose on the put side or the, or the call side. So every time I do that, every time I sell a call spread, 
the stock ends up coming back up, the put side ends up safe, and the call spread gets breached. So that call spread that I sold for hedging ends up being the what may, causes the trade to lose. So I'm gonna for now I'm gonna hold the uh, the the, um, the uh, Spotify put at 250. I'm not gonna do anything to it, and just see what happens. But it is kind of stressful. But uh, that's the name of the game, I guess. Right? If you want to generate uh, more returns, if you want to generate returns that are higher than the index funds or dividends, it's really all you have is selling options and. That's the risk that comes with it. So now I've got a bunch of trades here that I'm going to go over them uh, in my portfolio update because I haven't done a portfolio update in a while, so I'll do one. Uh, I've got 34 open trades, so I'm going to go over them in, in the portfolio update video. So for now, I just wanted to do a trade recap of the closed trades for April. I guess I could do one for May, for the first week of May. I mean, it was only... $224 but I can I can go over through the I can go over the trades for May as well but I'll do I'll do that in a separate video all right so if you have any questions leave in the comment section below like always if you want to join the trade alerts group where I'm only sending option selling strategies so naked puts put spreads or covered calls if you want to join that group it's a whatsapp group it's $25 a month the link is below in the description below the video also, if you want to open an account with Questrade to trade on the stock market, use my referral link below to get $50 in free commissions. And always, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, share with a friend, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.